Hello and welcome to OneFly JC. Today I want to discuss one important app that I use while flying. I always check this even before I go out to fly. When I'm planning a flight, this is one of the apps I always check, and that is the UAV forecast. Okay, so let's open up this app. Go right here, tap on that, and uh, open up the UAV forecast. Here we go. Right now, as you can see, it's showing that it's good to fly, but if you look at the very top of the page where it says uh, Summerdale Road, you can type in the address or the location that you want to fly. Or you can just leave, go here and put in current location, or you might have a number of favorite locations that you would like to fly at. You can put them in and keep them on record. All right, now let's start with the box that say weather. When you tap on that, Gave me a description of the weather summary at that look at, at that particular location that you want to fly in. You can scroll that and see these are all the different types of summary. You hit OK, and in that in that box you will see what the weather looks like at that particular location. To the right of that we have sun. Tap on that. You're gonna get sun sunrise and sunset times. Set that at a 24 hour clock if that's what you wish, or you can just leave it on standard clock. Next box says wind chill. I use centigrade, degree centigrade. I kind of use a mixture of uh, metric and standard measurements, as you might see somewhere down the road when you watch my videos. All right, let's go do wind chill. Wind chill in, this, in that area right now is 21 degrees Celsius. You can scroll this up and set the maximum and minimum temperature at which you will limit your flights. My minimum is um, two degrees Celsius. My maximum is 35 degrees. I have flown under both conditions and never had any problem. In fact, I have flown lower than minus two degrees Celsius and also above 35 degrees centigrade. Precipitation probability, how likely it is to rain, sleet, snow, hail, or anything that contains moisture is 11% at that location, all right? You can set it to where you want it to be. I have 80%, which doesn't really matter. As long as it's not raining, I will, or, or the conditions are not foggy, I will fly. I don't fly during foggy conditions because fog means there's a lot of moisture in the air, it's similar to flying up in the clouds. All right, folks, move over to the next one. It says cloud cover. Cloud cover is not a real key factor to me as long as it's not raining. So I have that set on 100%. Cloud base, if you try to set it for minimum cloud base, it's going to request a subscription, a one-year subscription of $23.99. That's one of the special features that you have to pay for. All right, but I don't want that, so I'll leave it where it is. Next over is visibility. How far can you see? 16 kilometers. Let's change it over to standard. So let's do that in miles by going that, scrolling the page and going right here. So visibility, you're looking at 10 miles visibility right now. And you can set for the minimum visibility. Since the FAA is saying you should be able to see at least three statute miles, that's what I have it set on. All right, I can set that on kilometers, which is five kilometers. Hit okay, move on down to the next row, which is wind. Wind speed, I have that in meters per second. We're gonna change the units later on. I have, right now it's showing that, that the wind velocity is two meters per second at 40, what's my glasses? Put them on. At 40 meters, height. All right, we can change that height and put it where you want it. All right, so we... And watch, when you're changing these, if you touch anywhere along this line, is the value is going to change. Okay? Maximum, I think, I will be like 15 meters per second. Let's see what that computes to... 
in miles per hour. I will take that up to 44 is fine. I have flown my drone under 45 miles an hour condition. So maximum wind for, uh, set for 45. So as long as it's under 45, I will show good to fly. And the altitude, I want to know what the wind is at about 100 and uh, let's say 110 meters. If I can make that 110 by using the slider. It's a little difficult, but what you can do, you can type that in, all right? You can type that right in here. Let's take this out and put one one. I usually put it like 115. That gave me a little leeway. So if I'm attacked by birds or something, I have five meters I can climb right away and head back home. That's the practice I use. Okay, I put out 115, but I didn't hit OK. Remember, folks, hit OK. I'm not going to back, go back and set it. If you don't hit OK, it's not going to set. All right, wind gust. You want to do that wind gust next. Wind gust right now is eight, meet, uh, 8 miles per hour. We'll change that to meters per second. Uh, maximum wind is 44. Wind gust at that altitude. You can change these to ground level. Okay, if I slide this all the way over, it will show me the wind reading at ground level. All right, let's go back to, to 100, and 100 meters. 100 meters will be equivalent to 328 feet. All right, hit OK. And then next over is the wind direction, which is important because if you fly in certain areas like off the edge of a cliff or if you're flying at the beach, you want to know how the wind is reacting. Okay, you always want to fly into the wind and fly back. But yes, the thing with wind direction, I don't quite agree with this with this app because I was always taught that you cannot tell what direction the wind is blowing in. It's, because the wind can, you cannot, you should not quote what direction the wind is blowing in because the wind can always change. You should always speak of what direction the wind is blowing from, where it's coming from. So that's the practice I've been doing. But this here, you can set this in magnetic north, all right, or compass. I usually have mine set on compass. Next is KP. I will skip right over that and come back to that. So let's go to, um, Oh, no, I missed, I, I skipped over satellite. Satellites, how many visible satellites are there right now at that particular location? There are 20, 28 visible satellites. Now, what type of satellites? You will find right here. Now, there's also a reading here that you can set for the, the number of satellites that you want to see visible or pit in order for you to fly your drone. I have it set on 12, but I really like to see on my drone 20 satellites before I put it up in the air. All right, so we'll scroll this up. And when do I want to begin to pick up these satellites? At five degrees elevation. So when as that thing come off over the horizon, I want to see it. I'm not going to put 25 uh, degrees or 50 degrees, no. I want five degrees so I know how many satellites I put. I can pick up at a lower elevation. Okay, now what type of satellites are visible? You want to be able to see? There are four indicators right here. GPS satellite, GLONASS satellite, Galileo satellites, and Baidu satellites. And I believe Baidu satellite is the Chinese satellite, so I'm not going to turn that on. I turn on all the, the, the other three. KP, as I said, I'm going to skip over that. Let's go to satellite blocks. It's showing 21 satellites are locked right now. What do you want to do? You have the ability to lock on to 21 satellites. What's the minimum you want to you know, lock on to before you put your bird in the air? I have 13, but usually I wait until I get 20. And because it doesn't take long for my drone to boot up to 20 satellites. I usually start my drone up while I'm in the car. As far as turning it on, turn on the controller, check everything, put my drone on the dashboard, face it in the direction I want to 
flying preliminary setup on my camera and take it outside the car. By the time I do all of that, I'll have 20, sa 20 satellites or more sometimes. Again, it's showing you what satellites you cho chose to lock on to. Go back to KP. I used to think that KP meant kilopascals. When I was in school many, many decades ago, I remember kilopascals it was one way to measure barometric pressure. So when I saw that, I thought it was talking about a barometric pressure. But apparently, when I opened this, I realized that it's not. This is the geomagnetic storm index, which ranges from zero to nine. Now, above three means disruption in the GPS. Do you want to fly when there's a dis disruption in the GPS satellite system? I say no, because I'll tell you a story. And this is why I have mine set at three. Started up my drone. As soon as I hit the automatic takeoff, normally would climb to that preset height that DJI have in the app and wait for me to give it a command. This time it just took off, rose up to that height and kept on going. But it didn't rise up any higher. That was the fortunate part because if it had risen much higher, I probably would have lost my drone. And since I was on a slight incline, it rose up, headed towards the hill and crashed into the slight incline. And uh, so I was able to recover my drone. I sent it back to DJI immediately and uh, <clears throat> They checked it out and did what they needed to do. And I checked my records to find out because I always do a screen recording when I go out to fly. And I saw that in the screen recording that KP was indeed five. So when I mentioned that to uh, DJI, they said, well, do not fly when the KP is above three. So I will advise you guys out here to take that into consideration. I've never heard anybody speak of this. So, that's my story, and it's sticking to me, and uh, peace, folks. And if you have not subscribed and you like what you see, please, please remember to hit the subscription button, give it a like, share the video, and come back again. Make sure when you subscribe, ring the bell, hit the bell, the black, make it black, make it black, and you'll get notification whenever I post something. Peace and out.